This news update is brought to you by Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. Welcome to this Barbados Today News Update for Tuesday, September 27. Thank you for joining us. I'm Desmond Brown. Residents were today securing their homes and business places in preparation for stormy weather. Officials from the Barbados Meteorological Services at a press conference this evening updated the nation on the progress of the weather system. Director of Met Services says residents should brace for up to six inches of rain. Of interest, of very much interest, would be the rainfall impact on the island. Now, you know, with these systems, you can get as much as four to six inches of rainfall. Now, that is where, we, that's where our concern is. And we are going to be monitoring this system very, very carefully. We are going to treat it, although the Hurricane Center has not yet named it a storm or a depression, as, as I speak, the Hurricane Hunters are going into the system to investigate it. But in my view and in the view of the Met Office, we are very near, if not, to a, a, a cyclone formation. And we're going to treat it that way. Meanwhile, Acting DEM Director Kenny Hines announced that all government-owned schools, including tertiary institutions, would be closed on Wednesday until further notice. In preparation for the storm, businesses were also being advised to shut down operations by 6 p.m. today to allow their employees to get off the road in a timely manner. Hines also revealed that all Category 1 emergency shelters will open this evening and that all, bus opera all buses operated by the state-run transport board will leave their various terminals, including Oystens, at 8 p.m. on their final journey for today. This means that if you are working and you're completing your work duty at 8 p.m., you will still be in time if you have to get onto the road to catch the bus. If you have to get into the terminal to catch the bus, you must be in the bus terminal in order to leave with that bus at 8 p.m. We will be picking up passengers on our way out to whatever our final destinations are. However, I need you to be clear on this, buses that are making what will essentially be a last trip from the terminal do not collect passengers on their way back in. And that is because a number of our services do not end where they commence. The Barbados Water Authority has denied reports circulating on social media of an island-wide shutdown. Meantime, residents have heeded the warnings and were out in their numbers today doing last-minute storm preparation. When our news team visited supermarkets, scores of people were observed shopping for bottles of water, canned goods, and other non-perishable items. There were long lines of people trying to get to the cashiers with their items, which also included candles. One customer service agent told our news team that there was a big demand for batteries. Normally on Tuesdays, you don't get this much traffic. And there is a lot of people are coming for the large batteries and stuff. Uh, it's because my day has been very hectic. Just backing up for batteries, biscuits, canned stuff. Yeah. I can know what we're yeah, Since yesterday. Actually today, I had to ask if today was Saturday or something because a lot of people are here today. Especially people that are at work now coming in lunch times. Yeah, it's a lot of people. So you'll find how much you know, like with a lot of batteries selling? Yeah. More than usual. So you don't have enough in stock? One thing we always had enough batteries. We probably know about stock. Because batteries are thin on our shelves long and they're no actually moving like people don't want it. Okay, so the shelves empty? Ah. <laughs> the whole front, front store is batteries, so the cash rates. Liat has announced the cancellation of several flights for Tuesday, September 27. The cancelled flights include 726 from St. Vincent to Barbados, 768 from Barbados to St. Lucia, 769 from St. Lucia to Barbados and Barbados to St. Vincent, 770 from St. Vincent to Barbados, 523 from Dominica to Barbados and Barbados to Grenada. Liat says customers affected by the disruptions who wish to rebook for a later date will be allowed to do so without charge or change fees or fare differences 
for the period of two weeks from the date of their original scheduled travel. And the Royal Barbados Police Force is, is advising all police officers scheduled to work the 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift on Tuesday, September 27, to report for their respective stations for duty at 7 p.m. Similarly, the police said all office personnel must report for duty at their respective stations at 7 a.m. on Wednesday, September 28. And the police are carrying out investigations into the sudden death of a 77-year-old St. Lucie resident. Granville de Pisa of Crab Hill, St. Lucie, died suddenly at 8th Avenue, Belleville, St. Michael, at its junction with Pine Road. The police said that around 12.45 p.m. today, de Pisa was walking along Belleville Road in the company of his wife when he suddenly collapsed and later died at the scene. There's regional and international news after this short break. news, teachers in Belize are gearing up for another round of industrial action on October 3 after their union demanded that the government meets its eight demands. The Belize National Teachers Union, which staged a successful one-day demonstration one week ago, said the action may extend beyond Monday, even as Prime Minister Dean Barrow urged teachers to call off this destructive crusade. The teachers have been protesting the delay in salary adjustments as well as a series of other national issues. On the international scene, a fire chief in New York was killed when an explosion in the Bronx tore the roof off a drug house on Tuesday. Authorities said another 20 people were injured. More in this report. A Bronx drug lab exploded at about 7.30 a.m. Tuesday morning at a home on West 234th Street near Irwin Avenue. FDNY Battalion Chief Michael Fay was wounded by the blast. The 17-year fire veteran was rushed to the hospital but could not be saved. Mayor de Blasio said, A tragedy has befallen a family, a fire department, and our entire city. Emergency responders were called to the Kingsbridge section of the Bronx about an hour earlier at 6.22 a.m. after a passerby called 911 to report a gas odor. The lone resident inside the house Tuesday exited the home when firefighters arrived and discovered the drug lab. The NYPD arson and explosion squad will investigate if the pot produced contributed to the explosion. One Instagram user wrote he and his son were three blocks away and the entire building shook. Officials said nine firefighters, six police officers, three Con Edison workers, and two civilians were injured by the blast that threw pieces of the roof into the street. That's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are on Izubi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Desmond Brown. <laughs>